Hello and welcome to another out of spec testing video. We are starting more or less a new series or a new focus on this channel, which is focused on electric cars, long-term battery health. And that will range everything from testing the capacity on brand new cars, and especially looking at how they age into the future. And Tesla has just released a new customer facing battery health test that should make it a little bit easier for us to understand how electric cars, high voltage batteries age as the vehicles gain usage and calendar aging over time. So uh, in this video, we are going to run the battery health test on this, which is actually a loaner car from Tesla. It's a very early 2023 Tesla Model 3 LFP, which is the standard hardier chemistry that was available in the Model 3 at this time. And a lot of people went for this battery pack option because of its perceived durability. And what's really cool is while this car is a few years old now, about two and a half years old at this point, it's actually only driven a very short distance, only about 9,500 miles. So about 10,000 miles of usage. We are gonna run the battery test on this car and look at how well it's held up over the first 10,000 miles of usage. Well guys, here it is. This is my loaner car from Tesla. And while I don't have the full history on these cars, and oftentimes we just won't, it is a really cool uh, benchmark to have a 10,000 mile car that has aged over some time. So uh, as a part of the series, we're gonna be uh, accepting viewer submissions to run their own cars, and uh, as well as as many Teslas as we can running this test on our own. In fact, our Cybertruck is out after one year of ownership right now getting run down, and that'll be a video coming very soon. If you can come around over here on this side, I know that this was a previously owned vehicle by someone before it went into Tesla care. I can tell that because it has some modifications. It has a red, Tesla badge, which is disgusting. Don't do that. And it also has dark tint everywhere. And there is even some more modifications like the red Tesla badge on the front and underneath the puddle light projectors. I wonder if I can show you that in here. Um, maybe it's just on the driver's side, it might be too bright, but they have little Tesla logos that shine on the bottom. So someone owned this car from new, presumably an enthusiast who bought some accessories and upgrades for it, tinted it, maybe with the intention of keeping it. I'm not sure why it ended up back in Tesla's hands. I'm not sure how long it's been in loaner service for. Um, and that would have been great information to have. Always with these battery health tests, it's great to understand the use case of the vehicle, the usage profile of them as we look to determine, is it more age and usage, uh, or sorry, age and time that degrades the cell or the actual usage on it. I wanna talk about this LFP battery pack really quick. This is a Chinese sourced LFP battery. Uh, I think it's a CATL pack in these, if I remember correctly. And it's about 60 kilowatt hours, 61, 62 kilowatt hours from new. And um, the thing with LFP is Tesla recommends a 100% daily charging limit on them. And they say that you have to full charge the car at least once a week. Let me just explain very quickly why that is the case. LFP, unlike NMC chemistry or N NCA or just a typical high nickel chemistry, has a very flat voltage curve, except for right at the bottom of the pack and right at the top of the pack. You get a voltage spike and a voltage dip right before they die and all the way through the meat of the discharge curve from basically you know 98% to 1%, it's very hard for the battery management system to understand where you are from a state of charge reading. So actually the way that these cars display state of charge and calculate it is once you've reached 100% and it does that because it can rely on that voltage spike right at the end, it then has something called a counter, a Coulomb counter. Um, uh, you know, there's a couple different words for them, a couple different ways they could actually do this, but essentially the car has a, has a current collector, a current counter that looks at how much energy is flown in and out of the battery pack since that last 100% charge. And then based off of the uh, amount of kilowatt hours that it sees go through the sensor and goes back in, then it estimates the state of charge that the battery is at. Now, if you go too long without recalibrating it at 100% or presumably at 0%, I'm not sure if Tesla's recalibrate down low, um, if you go too long, that, that calculation can sway. 
And it's very similar to why we've seen, you know, relying on these types of sensors uh, can lead to problems. We've seen it with the F-150 Lightning when we ran out during the truck race across the country, that car shut off at 6% state of charge. That's because it never had a completed charge. It wasn't LFP, but it was still relying on current or coulomb counters in that case to determine user displayed SOC. And we actually ran into something similar with the Lucid Air on the i90 Surge, where it was also relying on the counter and didn't go below zero as much as we were expecting before. And that was because there was a, an over temperature in the shunt that determines how much current flows in and out of the battery pack. And it had overestimated or underestimated how much energy had come in and out and its calculations swayed a little bit. Now, those types of scenarios aren't so common to find in a, in a real world scenario. Those cars had been running nonstop for thousands of miles, but here with LFP relying on those calculations is uber important because the car really can only log its reset at 100%. The next topic I wanna to talk about is LFP care and storage and everything. Even though Tesla recommends to charge these cars to 100%, it still is extremely hard on the cell for it to sit up at 100%. In general, LFP does have a high, higher cycle life. It can handle just more abuse, more high power charging, more draining. They're just very hardy cells in general, but it still stresses them to sit at 100%, especially if it gets warm out. So what I've always recommended to Tesla LFP owners is to charge to 100% once a week, you know, that's fine, drive it down and then, you know, use it normally, charge it to 80, charge it to 50, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Honestly, 80%, 90% is fine with LFP. It's just when they're really on that voltage spikes, they, they can get a little voltage stress of the cell. So that's where this car becomes interesting because this car, being a Tesla loaner, is full charged all the time. Before it goes out to a customer like ourselves, they pulled it off the level two charger. It had been sitting at 100% because that is the recommended charge limit from Tesla. And I thought, man, this could be kind of cool. It's aged. This was built in January of 2023. It's aged about two and a half years, just under, probably two and a half years since the battery was assembled, I would say, because that had to be built before the car had final assembly. And it's been driven such a short distance. It's primarily, my guess is AC charged to 100% all the time, and it's at 9,500 miles. So let's run the battery health test and we'll go inside the car and I'll show you what the results are. Well guys, I grabbed the car at 100% state of charge from the Tesla service center a couple days ago. Last night I took it up into Wyoming and drained the car all the way down to 0% state of charge. I then pulled it into my garage at home, plugged it into my Tesla wall connector that can deliver all the 32 amps this base model Tesla needs from a onboard charger perspective. You can see the big batteries get 48 amps, which all new Tesla Model 3s are large battery packs at the moment but the small battery, this one, the LFB, only had a 32 amp onboard charger. I then went down to service, scrolled down and hit battery health. And uh, I forgot that this generation Model 3 also had a manual charge port heater to melt the ice from the charge port, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, when I went into battery health, the car did its entire process. It basically drained the battery all the way down to zero it then charged it up to 100% and then let the battery rest at 100 for what felt like a long time. The entire process on this car took about 15 hours and that's from starting at 0%. The recommendation recommended procedure makes you start at 20% or below. I always recommend starting at the lowest possible percentage because it just has to burn off all that extra energy as heat and it can reduce the time and re reduce the stress on your HVAC system and everything if you just start at very low state of charge for it to do that full battery calibration. Tesla only lets you do this once every six months and that's probably just to avoid cycling the cells all the time. And being that this is a service loaner, I'm sure no one else is gonna do this in the near future. Uh, so I'm glad we had the opportunity to do so. Uh, so it completed about two hours ago today. I drove it around a little bit, to pulled it off top, top charge. And here's the uh, the reveal. Just to show you the mileage again, it's a base Model 3 with 9,536 miles built in January of 2023, according to the door card here. Let's come here to service. Let's click on battery health and boom. Were you expecting that? 7% degradation. Now, we have seen many times in our testing this number match exactly the amount of usable energy left in the vehicle in terms of a percentage. 
battery health can contain many different factors, but in, in the way Tesla views this is on actual capacity. So they're looking at capacity fade since new. And I was really surprised. To be honest, I was thinking LFP, super hardy. It can last a long time. I was expecting 97, 98% battery health, almost right up there. The cars had very little usage, um, but the calendar aging and perhaps just it sitting at 100% often, a lot of the time, just a, just a prediction, really pulled this thing 7% off of 100 now, we've also had some other viewers submit their anecdotal information on their LFP cars, some of them with very high mileage actually outperforming this um, battery health on this particular car. So it is a little bit curious to me why the 7% evaporated in less than 10,000 miles. Um, but again, the two factors are the aging, uh, calendar aging of the battery pack and the usage. This car's had very little usage, so it is just calendar aging even of these lithium iron phosphate cells that were perceived to be a hardier chemistry, in reality, maybe not turning out that way, at least in the way Tesla's implemented it, where they recommend, I can show you here, this 100% charging limit. If I pull it down to 80, it says, we recommend keeping your charge limit at 100%. And I think this is what's really uh, hard on the cells. Of course, my recommendation is let the car calibrate every week or two, and then, you know, just keep the, the battery pack just off of 100 when you can would be my recommendation. So, uh, like I mentioned, that 93% health number really does corroborate with when we do our driving from 100% to zero capacity tests. Typically, the only way to measure capacity is from, you know, without an internal software like this is to charge it to 100, drive gently till it stops moving and look at how many kilowatt hours you pull out of the battery pack. You can't ever go off the EVSE. That would be the charger saying how much energy is delivered because there's losses. There's so many other factors that can happen. Cooling pumps, HVAC things that can run during the charging session that would skew results. Here with a built-in battery health test system, though, it is seemingly a reliable number um, and something that is very interesting to look at. Another point, as I noticed, when we were at 100% state of charge, this number was 260 miles indicated. And I think new was 270 something. So it's lost about plus or minus 15 miles or maybe almost 20 miles of EPA rated range, probably a little bit less, probably around that 15 number, which um, feels pretty high to me, uh, considering this was perceived to be the, that super ultra durable uh, cell chemistry. And I guess um, it's just one data point. We're going to build out as many as we can. We're going to test as many Teslas and non-Teslas as possible. We'll have a spreadsheet. We'd love to see your data as well. Any anecdotal information, if you want to shoot us an email or whatever, by having your usage in the car, percentage of AC versus DC charging or whatever else you can provide um, can be extremely helpful. So thanks so much for watching this out of spec testing video. Let me know if you're excited to see how other electric cars are holding up. Can't wait to do this on low mileage cars, high mileage cars, old cars, new cars to really pinpoint how these vehicles are holding up over time. This is one data point of hopefully hum hundreds that we will collect over the next few years. And if anything, I'm really glad Tesla put in a battery health test that is consumer facing and not buried in service mode. Thanks so much for watching another out of spec testing video. See you on another one again soon. Bye-bye.